Hi there, and welcome to this training, the 13 ways that cleansing can help you lose weight. So I'm really excited to share with you how cleansing actually helps you lose weight in a healthy way. This is so, so important because so many people don't understand why they can't seem to get anywhere with their weight. And number one, it's because they're buying into the whole eat less, move more approach, which obviously doesn't work. All we have to do is look at the dieting statistics and the studies that have been done over the last 20 years um, and look at the results that people get in the end. They can never maintain those results, right? So, well, we get that. That doesn't work. So the other side of it was then, well, if that doesn't work, then what does work, right? And what works is actually getting your body healthy, right? The point is to actually be a naturally thin person. Like naturally thin people don't count calories. They don't spend their days at the gym and you'll see them eating whatever they want. Why can they do that and you can't? Why is it that you feel like, oh, if you just look at the wrong food, you gain weight, right? Like I hear that kind of thing. Going back to what I said in video one about the self-talk, um, if that's something that you're saying to yourself, you're commanding your body <laughs> to look at food and gain weight, right? So be very, very mindful of how you speak to yourself because that is creating a reality. All right, so the reason why the body will not let you lose weight is to protect you. When your body is not in an optimal state of health, the symptom of extra fat, it's a symptom that is a side effect of a particular health issue, right? So I don't know what it is for you in particular. Um, we don't even need to know what it is to be honest with you because there's a spectrum when it comes to health, right? Like over here, there's like, okay, um, maybe we'll put death on this side and like eternal life on this side, okay? And somewhere in the middle, that's where we all always are, right? Like, you know, some days you feel like death and some days you feel like, in like invis in invincible. <laughs> Um, and that's to do with your vitality and your level of health. And the medical establishment puts names on these symptom groups that we get together when our body is out of balance. But the truth is there is a spectrum of health and disease. And basically we want to be walking towards greater health at all times. And instead of slipping backwards into disease and the major thing that underlies the uh, whether you're moving in one direction towards health or towards disease is to do with toxicity. If there's toxins in your body, you are not in growth mode. Okay, your body is want to shut down because it is in protection mode. Um, if you're nutritionally deficient, you're not getting the nutrients your body needs. You're going towards death. Right? Like people can be so deficient in certain nutrients that they can get deficiency, nutrient deficiency diseases, and then death. Okay. And the way our, um, our culture looks at health and disease is like this thing, like some, like to imagine that you're healthy one day, you're perfectly healthy. And then one day, boom, a disease falls into the sky, just lands on you. You're a total victim to it. And then you're sick. That's not what happens. You become susceptible to disease as time goes on because of these things like toxicity, malnutrition, stress is a big one, right? Stress puts you in a shutdown mode. You're not moving towards health when you're in stress. In fact, even medical doctors will um, acknowledge that stress is like one of the biggest causes of disease, right? Like it's a thing that like boils the pot over, right? So you're kind of getting along with things that are not so great for your body and you're fine because you're happy, right? You're on holidays drinking margaritas and that it's not making a big deal, but then you get some sort of news that puts you into a state of trauma or shock. And then you just start, you know, it's a, it's the thing that boils the pot over and then you have the symptoms and then we categorize it, how the symptoms play out into certain diseases, but really it's all just one thing. So this is how taking an approach like cleansing can actually address multiple problems that you're having with your health, including the inability to lose weight. So a lot of times people think of weight, um, like people being overweight as being caused what they're eating, but actually it's a lot of these health problems that are underlying that actually cause you to eat in ways that cause you to gain weight. Okay, so let's look at PMS for example. 
you could be eating like perfectly three months or three weeks out of every month and have no cravings and eat totally like, you know, the right amounts, not overeat and eat the right things and like actually want to eat those things. And suddenly it's just before your period. And all you want to do is eat chips and go out for burgers and fries. Right. So, and it's your body, like your body is literally driving you to do that through cravings. So this is the thing with why the eat less, move more approach doesn't work because it's not actually addressing what's the root cause of what's going on, of what's causing these cravings or drives. So in order to actually heal at the level of root cause, to heal being overweight at the level of root cause, we actually have to heal our entire health at the level of root cause. So with a cleanse, that's what we're doing, right? We are taking away the toxins that are standing in the way of your vital force being able to heal you, right? Because that's what the, where the healing happens. This is going to be an invisible process that you're not going to have control over. All you have control over is whether you're putting toxins in your body or not, whether you're putting nutrients in your body or not, whether you're putting um, negative talk into your, to yourself or not, whether you're um, letting stress drive you um, and get out of control or whether you're doing what you need to do to get a hold of your mind and to get out of that state of stress. That's the stuff that you have control over, but you don't have control over the vital healing force. It is going to do its thing. You can help it, right? Like you can help it by visualizing yourself at your ideal weight, for example, and actually instructing your body on what you want to create. But that force, that drive to heal, to grow is already within you and it wants to do this. You don't really even have to help it, to be honest with you. Like, yeah, it's good. Visualize yourself as your ideal weight. But this vital force inside of you is actually going to do the work anyways, as long as you just take the obstacles out of the way. That's what cleansing does. Now, there are some approaches to cleansing that deepen deficiency, um, <clears throat> like fasting, for example. If you are already not well, and then you fast on top of it, you can actually go into a deeper state of um, deficiency, or people will restrict calories, that will put them in deficiency. And then this slows your metabolism down, makes everything sluggish, then you start eating normal again, then there's problems. This program does not do that because there is no limit on how much you can eat. You can eat as much as you want within the guidelines of the program. So there's no counting calories, there's no measuring portions, there's just you sitting down to food and connecting with your body and with the food and deciding how much feels right in that moment because your body will always tell you. People do not binge eat the foods that are on this program, okay? Once you're past all your cravings and everything like that, you'll just, be, you'll just naturally do this. It's when you are um, on a sugar kind of um, cycle where you're always eating a lot of sugar um, or processed foods that what that's doing inside of your body is actually driving you to continue to want to do that. That's why you're doing it. Okay. Doing a cleanse is going to help you get off that track, right? So it does take some discipline, um, and some willpower to get yourself to do this. And remember, this is not a long-term strategy. You're not going to stay on a cleanse for the rest of your life. This is to kickstart your progress. Um, the reason why I created, created the delish diet, which is the next step from this program is because that's what's going to help you to be able to eat in a more moderate way, more exciting and more pleasurable um, way that is that you can still maintain your ideal weight and you can still continue to lose it, right? If you need to lose more than 15 pounds, you can uh, move on to that approach after this and continue to lose the weight in a pleasurable, nourishing way. Continues to keep toxins out and continues to add nourishment to your body and is so nourishing and so pleasurable that there's no way you're going to go into starvation mode um, and have your metabolism slow down when you're eating that way and you just continue to lose weight in a way that you can actually maintain for life, right? That is a way that I eat now all the time. I eat the delish diet way, which is basically just um, acknowledging the human physiology of what a human requires nutrition wise and what causes weight and uh, get weight gain and what causes you to lose weight, right? It's really not rocket science. And if you look at the people who are supporting people with weight loss, 
Um, nowadays, who are not proponents of the eat more, move or eat less, move more movement, if you look at their approach, you're going to see that it's almost identical to what I'm teaching you in the Delish diet, and it should be almost identical. The reason why is based on physiology, the science of how your body works. Okay, so once you know that, once you've gotten this head start, you've got your body out of that sticky place where things won't budge by doing the cleanse. Then, when you apply those approaches your body just responds how it's meant to. And it's not rocket science, and it's not new, and it's not a system, and it's not a method. It's just the way the body works. So now I'm gonna go into the 13 ways specifically that going on a cleanse is gonna help you to lose that first 15 pounds or that last five to 15 pounds that you've been struggling with. So I'm just gonna get out my trusty notes here. You can actually print them as well and, and follow along. Okay. So number one is your happy liver will have the time and energy to catch up on all its many jobs, specifically to detoxify you and regulate your hormones properly. So poorly regulated hormones are one of the reasons that you can't lose weight. So when your liver is overburdened from toxicity, it can't do its jobs properly. And one of those jobs is to regulate your hormones. The other thing that the liver does, and, and hormones, including one of the hormones called insulin, which is your fat storage hormone, and then we have also our, like, our estrogen, progesterone, um, testosterone, all these are um, hormones that are involved in whether you're going to be gaining muscle or burning fat, or if you're going to be storing fat. They're very, very important, but if your liver is toxic, those hormones are not going to be properly regulated. You can have symptoms of estrogen dominance, for example. Um, estrogen dominance leads to, um, in, in women, it leads to weight gain. It leads to, um, like all sorts of things like puffing up, drying out, uh, menstrual pain, pre, uh, early menopause, all these annoying things, bleeding too much, right? Which is another way of losing nutrition. Um, and in men, it'll show up as having what we call a beer belly, right? So just because we think of estrogen as being a female hormone, actually in men, what they get when they have estrogen dominance from this sluggish liver um, is they will end up with a beer belly and man boots. Okay, so this is you know one of the, the factors involved in why people can't lose weight. Also, your liver um, is going to have to, like your fat cells have toxins in them. And when you break them down while you're losing weight, they're gonna be eliminated. And guess who's gonna have to deal with those toxins that were safely stored away in your fat cells? your liver is gonna to have to deal with that, okay? And if you're um, not getting the nutrition that you need, your liver can't deal with that. Your liver detoxifies using nutrients. It requires all these nutrients coming in to actually create the chemicals that it creates to take toxic things and break them down into things that are not toxic and then have them eliminated through your colon. And if it doesn't have the nutrition it needs or it's so overburdened by toxicity that's constantly coming in, from you know, your personal care products to what you're smelling, perfumes, laundry, soap, um, to even having poor digestion, right? If you're not digesting your food properly, that food that's not digested is going to be like uh, putrefying and fermenting in your gut. Bad bacteria are going to be eating that and then they're gonna piss and shit inside your body. I'm not even kidding you. They have byproducts that are toxic that now your liver has to take care of. Plus, you may have leaky gut. And then your, these food particles are actually getting into the um, bloodstream, into this vein called the hepatic portal vein, which goes from your intestines to your, your liver. Now it's, now it's digesting food. It's not supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to be doing all those other things, right? Like regulating hormones, but it can't because it's just overburdened. Okay, so when you cleanse, you give the liver it needs to detoxify and you stop bringing in the toxins and you boost your digestion so that it can finally catch up on all the jobs that it's meant to do optimally. Okay, so that's covered number one and two. And also number three, right? So if your hormones are working properly, then you're going to be producing them optimally and you're going to have the feelings of satiation, right? Um, you have something called leptin and of course we have our insulin. Right? And your liver helps to balance these hormones and helps you to feel satiated when you're eating so that you don't overeat naturally, right? Like we, we try to like control all these things from the outside using willpower, but they're, they're not controllable. 
if our body is driving us, right? Because we have like, we, you probably heard of insulin um, resistance where your body won't actually allow you to take insulin in so your blood sugar stays high. Um, and then that, because it's, then it, the blood sugar is too much sugar in the blood, that's why the, um, it stimulates the insulin, it's higher and higher and it causes fat storage, okay? We also have leptin resistance. So uh, that goes along with that, which means we actually don't feel the signaling that we're full anymore. So um, yeah, it's what's going on inside your body that is a health issue that is actually driving these cravings and causing you to do things in unnatural ways that cause weight gain. It's not because you're a gluttonous, um, lazy, slob person who has no self-discipline that you're going for the things that are not good for you it's because your body is giving you the wrong signals um, based on things being in disorder, okay? All right, um, moving on here. Okay, cortisol levels. Okay, so when you are feeling stress, um, toxins can be a stress, but feelings can be a stress. Your experiences in life, your environment that you're living in, the clutter around you, sugar, eating excess sugar can be a stress. That's a huge stress for a lot of people in this society. What it does is it drives up cortisol, right? This is your stress hormone. How your hormones work is when your cortisol goes up, your insulin goes up with it. So you could be not changing your diet at all. Do something that totally stresses you out, puts you in a chronic stress mode, and you will literally start to store fat. Okay, so that's why the other aspects of this program where we're going to be decluttering your life and looking at what's draining you and like just actually making a plan to face those issues head on, like actually take the um, looking at the chronic stress in your life and then identifying what acute stress you need to face and actually do to put a stop to that chronic stress. That is going to help you to lose weight because you're going to stop having chronic stress. And by the way, um, acute stress, your body, your primal brain attributes that to being chased by a lion. Guess what you need to do? You need to lose weight to address your acute stresses. Um, so it also has that benefit to it hormonally. Okay, so the other thing this does is it stops sugar cravings by balancing out your blood sugar levels, right? So a lot of you are struggling with sugar and again, you just think that it's something about your personality um, or that's just the way you are, but actually you're in a state of blood sugar flux. And when your blood sugar crashes, you want sugar. If my blood sugar crashed right now, I'd want sugar too, right? That's just the way it is. It's happening from within you. Um, so this program cuts you off sugar cold turkey and the intense nutrients um, infusion that you're getting, uh, the way you're eating it, foods that are low carb naturally, you're going to be stopping that cycle of um, blood sugar imbalances that causes cravings for sugar. Okay, so that means that you can actually um, burn fat, right? If you're constantly snacking and consuming carbohydrates, you're gonna not be able to lose weight because there's never a time when there isn't any insulin hot, elevated in your bloodstream. Insulin elevated in your bloodstream, it's the fat storage hormone, will store fat. There'll be no time for burning fat ever, okay? That's not to do with just your, um, what you're eating, but also the timing of what you're eating, right? Like snacking, no, you don't need to be snacking all the time. The six meals a day thing, that's just a management, management strategy for blood sugar issues. What you need to do is actually solve it. If you don't have high blood sugar, if your blood sugar isn't going up and down, you, you're gonna actually just find that you don't need to snack anymore. But again, you don't have to use willpower to stop yourself from doing that. Eating this way just automatically makes that happen because what's inside of you changes. So that changes your cravings and your desires, which changes your habits automatically without you having to exercise willpower uh, because willpower runs out. So you can't do that forever. Okay. Um, okay, so Another thing is, is that when you get your cortisol levels balanced, then you're bringing down the inflammation that causes the water weight, right? Um, and also the inflammation that is, um, so like, okay, here, let's talk about this cortisol, how this works. So um, when you have uh, really high cortisol, right? Um, 
you get the inflammation, right? So you get the water and all that tells you that something you're doing is definitely not working for you. Um, what you're eating, your lifestyle, that's a sign from your body crying out for help to change things. But sometimes we let that go on so chronic that we actually start having low cortisol. Now we don't even have the ability to like launch this inflammation, right? Um, and we get exhausted. And then we can't even like deal with the, like, so, so the, the chemical in our body, because cortisol is actually should be a balm. It should be a balm for inflammation. It should be soothing to the inflammation, right? Like when you have um, a rash, you go to the doctor where they give you cortisol cream, right? Call it cortisone cream. So if your body is out of control inflammation, it actually means that your cortisol was so high for too long that it just like was stopping able to produce at a high levels. And now your cortisol is low. You're exhausted. You can't even deal with the inflammation. You have like red skin, rashes, water. It just, it just can't deal with it. You're too exhausted. Okay. Um, so with the cortisol, um, we want to have balanced cortisol and we do that in this program by dealing with the gut issues and the inflammation, but also by looking at our lifestyle and dealing with these chronic stresses that are actually what's really draining our cortisol is settling for chronic stress in your life. Like actually being just like, there's an, I can't change this and just constantly being um, stressed by it and it being chronic. That is like, you know, you can't just deal with the diet. You have to deal with the other, the, the stuff that's draining you in your life too, that has become chronic. Okay, so inflammatory chemicals from not having enough cortisol after it being too high for too long, okay, is going to cause inflammation chemicals that are going to basically make it difficult for you to lose weight, okay? And then of course, um, that water weight's gonna make you feel fat. And when you feel fat, guess what most people do? They're just like, eh, well, I feel fat anyway, so what's the point of doing this? If I'm just going to feel fat, I might as well eat french fries, right? That's what our mind does. It's, it's just human, right? Um, so we want to balance our cortisol. We don't want it too high uh, because that causes inflammation. We don't want it too low because that cause, lets the inflammation go out of control with no, you know, balm to bring it down. Um, okay, the other aspect is that this actually helps you eat way more fats, way more good fats than you've ever eaten before. As long as you don't have gallbladder issues, you can eat fat in unlimited amounts. Again, because you're past all of these problems, um, the blood sugar issues and everything like that, and all the cravings, you know, it's going to take about you know, up to about five days before that stuff goes away. Then your body will tell you how much is the right amount of fat. Okay. So you'll be making these things called skinny bombs. The skinny bombs are what you're going to eat when you feel hungry in between meals, or you can even have them at meals as a way of bringing the fat content up at that meal. That's going to give you the satiation that your body has been crying out for. It's when you're low in protein and low in fat that you're going to crave carbohydrates, and then you're going to create that cycle of having more carbohydrates. So eating the protein and eating the fat is not going to cause you to gain weight. It's going to actually um, make you feel satiated so you don't overeat. Okay. And what happens is you actually have your overall amount of calories that you would even eat in a day, just start to go down without you trying. Okay. You may even find there are times where you're just not hungry. You might not even eat a meal because you're learning how to listen to your body. There's no reason why a person has to eat three meals a day, right? Like that is not like who made up that rule. You eat when you're hungry. Okay. Ideally you you know, have meals at the same time every single day because it's trains your body is when the optimal time to produce digestive enzymes. Okay. And we do have to have some rhythms in our lives. So no, I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat three times a day either. You can absolutely. Um, but you may not need to, right? Like you really can listen to your body when you have the right amount of fat and the right amount of protein. Sometimes you may not need to eat. You might actually find yourself start to naturally do intermittent fasting in this program. And if that's what's going to happen, that's fine. Go for it. It's not going to hurt you one little bit. It's going to be totally beneficial. That's more time for you to burn fat in between your meals. Where you're not stimulating. Okay, so fat also is a fuel for your body. You're going to have more energy 
and it's going to boost your metabolism. So even if you're eating less calories, you're not going to go into starvation mode like you would on a restricted calorie diet that's low in fat, right? You restrict calories and you restrict fat, your body's going to think it's starving. If you're eating skinny bombs and your calories go down naturally and you're totally satiated because you're eating enough protein and getting these really delicious treats that have lots of fat in them, there's no way your body is going to interpret that as this person is starving. I need to like slow the metabolism down. No, it's not going to do that. Um, so it's kind of like kindling for your, your metabolism. It really actually boosts it and stimulates your um, metabolism. And, and in addition to that, our oil that we focus on in the program is coconut oil, which has its own, um, you know, its whole own thing for being helpful with weight loss and stimulating your metabolism. Plus your skin is going to look amazing, right? Like when your skin has like, a lot of people think they need to drink more water if their skin is dry. And yes, that's part of it, but you're not going to absorb that water into your skin. If you're like, have been avoiding fat, if you've been on a low fat diet, you don't get any saturated fats. You need that saturated fat for beautiful skin. And it's going to help you actually absorb that water. So the two of them together, the saturated fat and the like properly hydrating yourself, mm, your skin is going to be amazing. Okay. Okay, so I'm, now I'm at number nine, if you've been following along in the handout. You're gonna eat a lot more nutrient-dense food than you're used to, okay? So this is going to help you to, if you have had a history of dieting, and every time you've gone to lose weight, it's always been a thing where you have starved yourself and you've slowed your metabolism down, so you, then you get that rebound weight gain, and because it's been low fat, um, that causes your metabolism to slow down, and um, makes it harder and harder for you to even maintain your weight without restricting calories. That's bad. That's a recipe for disaster and it's not good for you. And it's also a recipe for malnutrition because then what you do is you just keep on like eating less, right? And if you're not eating like nutrient dense foods and you're eating less, just think of how much nutrient deficiency there is. So what this does is because there's no limitation on how much you can eat, there's just limitations on what you can eat, right? There's the guidelines, here's what to eat, here's what not to eat. But there's no limitation on how much. So I'm going to decide what, and you're going to decide how much, okay? That's really going to be the, the thing that's going to make it easy for you to not worry whatsoever about not getting enough calories and, and slowing your metabolism down. So you're going to follow what your body tells you of how much of what to eat. And you're gonna be getting more nutrition than you've probably gotten ever or in a long time, right? Because every single food on this planet is nutrient dense. It's like a literally 21 day infusion of nutrition for your body. And that is going to give your liver the nutrition it needs to detoxify. And it's gonna be like, woohoo, now I can actually catch up on all the jobs. And then including letting fat cells break down letting those toxins out to be, you know, deactivated by the liver. Um, and then, you know, you're just going to feel so much more energy. Everything in your body is going to work better because everything in your entire body is run on enzymes. Okay. Like every little like chemical reaction that has to happen in your body to make you healthy runs on enzymes. And guess what helps those enzymes and makes those enzyme systems function optimally nutrients nutrients so if you're low in a nutrient and you have a certain enzyme system that needs to get something done in your body it's going to be sluggish it's not going to be able to do it properly or optimally and that's how we set ourselves up for disease in the body with low nutrition okay and let's talk cravings most of your cravings that you have for foods are driven by nutrient deficiency. If your body needs a nutrient and you're not eating whole foods, it's just gonna keep telling you to eat more and more of those processed foods because it's like you're not getting enough. So just keep eating more and then maybe we'll get enough. But your body doesn't know there's not, no nutrition in that cardboard box food that's full of additives and maybe you're lucky it's synthetic added nutrients, right? So it's gonna tell you to just keep eating more and more of those foods because it can never get satiated because the nutrition it's looking for is not in the food you're putting in your body. So when you eat this way and you follow your body to the amounts it's telling you to eat and you finally get like saturated with nutrition, those cravings just go away because your body is not telling you 
to overeat anymore. Right? It's not your fault if you overeat. It's because you don't have the nutrition that would naturally stop that. Just effortlessly, right? That's what you're looking for. This is what a cleanse does. Okay, so it also stops cravings in another way. When you're eating poor quality food, processed foods, sugar, you are literally feeding the growth of bad bacteria in your body. Guess what bad bacteria love to eat? They love to eat garbage. They love to eat sugar and all the additives and all the crap that comes in this food that's not even really food, it's food products. That's what they like to eat. Every time, think about it this way, every time you eat junk food, you are feeding bad bacteria. Every time you eat a whole natural food the way nature intended in its natural state, you're feeding the growth of the good bacteria in your body. The good bacteria in your body are there to keep you optimally functioning. They're helping you extract nutrients from your food. They're helping you digest your food. You're their home and they want you to be happy, okay? Because, and they want you to be clean, right? Actually, they do a lot of cleansing in your body. If you have optimal levels of good bacteria in your body, you're always on a cleanse. Every time you have some kombucha, or some kefir, or take your probiotic supplement. You're putting something in your body that's gonna start cleaning you up, right? Because you're, it's, you're the, it's home. It wants to live in a clean house, so they'll clean you out. So that you can do effortlessly, right? Um, but those bad bacteria, we call them bad bacteria, they are supposed to be in low amounts in your body, and um, they are actually there to decompose you when you die. So what you're doing is eating them while you're still alive. And instead of not necessarily, you're not dead, but they're producing things that will help you on your way to get there, right? Remember the spectrum? Death, eternal life, right? You feed them, and you're helping them do their job. Their job is to break you down, okay? So it's nice to have like a picture, you know, of how this stuff works so that you don't forget it. All right. Okay, so you're gonna be more hungry when you're eating inflammatory foods, okay? Um, and if you have food sensitivities and digestive weakness because you're not actually breaking your food down properly. So if you're not breaking your food down properly, then, and you're not extracting nutrients from the food, you may be eating the best quality diet in the world but not getting the nutrition out of it. And then you're still starving. But those foods are driving inflammation and you're healthy because of having this underlying digestive um, like weakness, digestive weakness from the gut. Okay, so this is essential. You have to actually heal your leaky gut and boost your digestive capacities so that you can optically absorb nutrition. And then from there, then, and with your gut healed, then you're getting rid of those cravings and you'll naturally stop overeating and you'll finally feel full again. And you'll finally feel deeply nourished, right? really, really important not to just accept. You have been diagnosed with a food sensitivity or an intolerance or something like that, and then you've been told, okay, well, don't eat that food. And that's the only answer you've been given. Don't stop there. You can heal. Your entire body can heal itself. You can completely heal and seal your gut lining so that you can eat those foods again. You really need to actually go deeper than that. Because if all you do is stop eating the food, and then that inflammation keeps going on, there's going to be like, you know, a month, a year later, there's going to be new food that you have a problem with. Until it's so bad, there's no food left to eat. There's many people who have that problem. There's like, there's like, they're like, oh, I have six foods I can eat now. That's because just eliminating foods does not deal with the root cause issue, which is leaky gut. You have to actually heal that. And that's what this program does. Originally, this program was used for healing the gut. But it's the perfect weight loss program, right? Like all my clients... My specialty before this was working in the realm of prenatal and gut health. So helping people with food sensitivities, especially children, things like eczema and things like that. And um, my, I also have a background as a gas practitioner, which is totally entirely focused on the gut, uh, gut brain connection, right? So all the mood disorders and everything that goes with that as well. And so what I noticed with all my clients is that if they were overweight and they would do this program, you know, for their gut issues and they'd be like so excited because they also lost 15 pounds, right? So that is basically the foundation. And I've done this myself multiple times to do it for my clients, 
um, along with my child when he had eczema and every time I would lose 15 pounds, right? So any kind of cleanse that's getting rid of the top allergens that are causing the digestive inflammation is actually getting to the root cause of all health problems because the majority of health problems, inflammation is at the root of it and inflammation starts in the gut. Okay, so um, this program addresses the, the very root cause of people's health problems. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a name disease. You don't have to be looking to heal something in particular. You just give your body what, it's, what it needs, take away what it doesn't, and it does the job for you. All right. Number 13. Okay, so 13, number 13, it's the final way that um, doing a cleanse can help you lose weight is that you become fully hydrated. Okay, so when we're eating all of these foods that are processed, we're just like absorbing, like literally they're like, they're yucky, right? Like they don't have any water in them. They're like sucking up all your water, making you dehydrated. Plus people just tend to not drink enough water. Or if they do um, have these health problems, they don't absorb water. So maybe drinking tons of water and just pissing it out, not absorbing it, right? So in this program, you're going to get fully hydrated. You're going to be eating your fruits and vegetables, um, not sh high sugar fruits, but the low sugar fruits. Um, a lot of these things are going to be coming um, enzyme rich because you're going to eat, be eating them raw and they come with water, right? Um, and then you're going to actually bring inflammation down. One of the body's uh, things that your body will go into inflammation for is being dehydrated. So with all the, the live fresh foods that you're gonna be eating in addition to the basic foods in the program, plus drinking water, optimally for your body weight and for your um, uh, basically your activity levels and things like that. You're going to be able to, in 21 days, really focus down on this proper water amounts um, and then feel the effects of it. And then once you have that benefit, you see how it brings inflammation down and pain down in your body and helps you lose weight. It's also um, one of the things that is um, a problem when you're dehydrated, like in a really direct way with weight loss, is that it makes you deficient in testosterone. You, for optimal testosterone levels, which is what helps you build muscle, which is really good for keeping your metabolism revving up, um, you need water, okay? You also need sleep. Okay, there's a lot of different factors um, that are involved, obviously. So one of the um, invitations I have for you in this program is to sleep way more than usual, okay? Not just because of um, the uh, impact on your cortisol levels, but also for the impact on things like testosterone, right? So, um, and you burn fat while you sleep, right? So, and that's because also with the time when you're not eating anything, so you're not stimulating insulin, so your body actually has the opportunity to go into your fat cells um, and get those, get that storage, uh, just to get, keep things moving your body. You're, you're using your, this energy from fat, not just for like, you know, running or like moving your body, like you could be lying still and doing nothing. And there's all these things that your body has to do internally that's invisible that you're not seeing that are actually using that stored fat for energy. So you burn a lot of your fat while you're sleeping. Okay. So there you have it. The 13 ways that cleansing helps you to lose weight, to set you on the path to permanent weight loss. So this is a way of kickstarting your journey to losing weight. And there's a couple things to, to really think about why to do this. So you want to do this for the healing benefits, right? So get really, really clear on what you want to heal. Um, also, you want to do it because you just want to get shit done. Get Do a clear slate, right? When you're setting time aside, when it's really structured inside of like a container, it's easy to like just give it that go, right? Um, and you're going to need to do something right? Like you're not going to be able to, to emotionally eat. So you're going to have to actually deal with those emotions, for example. And that's a great opportunity to face that stuff instead of constantly stuffing it down and having it become an unconscious source of chronic stress. Um, you may be doing this because you want to lose some weight. Okay. So uh, maybe you have like a grad coming up or maybe you have um, a wedding or Maybe you're single and you're feeling uh, less than confident with your body. Um, 
you know, finding that thing for you. Uh, maybe you're going to be getting pictures done, you know, speak on stage, or who knows what it is. Find that why that's going to help you really stay focused on this for 21 days to get that momentum. Because once you have the momentum, it's just so much easier to keep going, right? Once you've made some progress and you have something to celebrate, then it's really a lot easier to keep going. So, so it's really, it's, it's for those things, right? It's the, it's the way to lose weight fast while gaining health, being healthier at the same time. But I also want to encourage you to keep coming back to it every year, at least once a year. Summer is the best time, right? Because uh, it's hot and, and it's naturally like a good time for cleansing. It's better than in the winter. Um, you can definitely still do this in the winter because it's not fasting, right? Like fasting in the winter is a little bit, ugh, right? That's when we have the building foods. Those building foods are in season, right? Like the stuff that we can freeze, like the meat and the broth and the heavy stuff. Um, but in summer, it's all the fresh, the fresh stuff. So it's the perfect time to be, you know, eating, doing a cleanse like this. So do it as a, as a way of giving yourself the self love. Once a year, um, taking the time to give your body a tune up every year, right? So actually gives you more leeway when for the rest of the year, when you want to go off the path for a while, so you want to go on a holiday or something like that, or, you know, whatever, I don't know what, what your lifestyle is like, but do, we don't want to eat like purists for the rest of our lives. We, we want to be able to go out with people and go on trips and go to parties and do fun things and not have it be this massive setback. When you do a cleanse like this, you keep bringing yourself back to that really good homeostasis so that you have a leeway to do that. You don't have to eat like a perfectionist in order to maintain your health or your ideal weight. So it helps you reset yourself every single year. Plus, every time you do it, you get more comfortable with it. You can go deeper and longer with it. And then you have increasing levels of health. So instead of as you age becoming sicker and weaker, like most people just succumb to until they get a disease or until they're like crippled and in pain and they can't even enjoy the extra time they have, be someone who does this for your body so that you grow into um, over time, you just become healthier, right? Like, so what if you have gray hair and wrinkles? If you are super healthy, the invisible stuff that you can't see inside your body, then you have the energy and that vitality to live life to the fullest, to travel, to take adventures, to be sexy. Why not be sexy when you're 80, 90 years old, right? You could be having the greatest sex of your life at that point, right? Or you could just feel fat and frumpy and sick and inflamed and have a headache and never want to have sex. There's so many reasons to do this. So don't think of it as just a one-time thing. Think of it as um, something that you keep, you do on a regular basis to give your body a tune up and a reset of your whole life. Recalibrate every year to a higher level. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.